Hello, this is Roxana for Avid Diva, and today we are going to talk about Alzheimer's being a caretaker and what does that have to do with plants. You know, I always admire people that have family, a job, and still hustle and get a, a side gig going, like a, their own business or something like that, because I never understand where they find the time. And it's not that they have more energy than I do. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's not that they have more free time because we all have the same amount of time on this earth. I mean, as far as days, we all have the same 24 hours. I just always admire people that have that ability to do the hustle, okay? And the reason why I'm telling you this is because um, I made an announcement that in October I was going to start putting content every week on the two channels that I have here, Metamorphosis Rocks and Abediva. And then we got the announcement that a hurricane was coming. And if you know anything about Alzheimer's, you know that this is not good. It confuses them more. It makes it, it a, a simple storm can turn into a complete nightmare, which it did. Um, and then a couple days after the hurricane, she ended up in the ER. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with her because her numbers were not bad at that point. Her, um, her white cell count was not bad at that point so nobody could figure out what was wrong with her two days later I we end up in the ER again and it turns out that she has an infection so we have to put her in the hospital and this is the thing one of the things that I have discovered lately not only from my own experience but from everything from the 911 operators that came and not the operators the people that came to the house to take care of her and take her to the hospital because the first time we did put her in an ambulance, um, to the people that I talk to on a day-to-day -day basis, to those people that are in support groups with me, is the frustration that we as caretakers have with the normal human people that have never had a person with Alzheimer's in their lives. Or they have one, they just don't talk to them, or they don't see the effects. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because Y'all don't understand that this is not just somebody that forgets things or that maybe forgets a person one or two. Um, when you have Alzheimer's, there's a thing called sundowning, which I've mentioned before on this channel, where the person just doesn't remember. Um, they don't catch the day and the night. So when the sun goes down, that's why I call it sundowning, they become more confused. Now, in the case of my mother, it doesn't matter what season of the year we are. After 6 p.m., she goes into complete meltdown. Ironically, when she would wake up in the middle of the night to go pee, she was completely normal. But when it was, she had been awake since 9, 10 a.m. in the morning and it was 6 p.m., it would just be a complete disaster. That's one of the things that happens to people with Alzheimer's. Um, another thing that happens to people with Alzheimer's is that because the connection between their mouth and their brain is not as good as it used to be, they don't tell you when they feel sick. And if they're from the era that my mom is, my mom comes from an era where you would not complain. You would not say you feel sick or anything like that. The doctor would ask you how you're feeling, you would say fine. And my mom comes from that era in that part of her brain still works so if the doctor asks her how are you doing she says fine that's a problem she doesn't always complain about pain she doesn't always complain about the right pain and it's not that she's doing it on purpose it's that she doesn't know how to communicate it's like a year and a half when you have a 18 month old baby they know they're in pain but they don't know how to explain it to you because they don't have the vocabulary well in the case of a person with Alzheimer's they have the vocabulary they just the connection between their brain and their mouth is not there. So they might tell you they have back pain and really what they have is stomach pain. Things like that. Taking care of a person with Alzheimer's takes its toll on a person. My dad used to say that. My dad used to say that they wonder why they they kill the caretaker before they, they, they die. And my dad passed away in January. And he was taking care of her. Of course, he didn't tell us what was going on, so that doesn't help. But... um he did he he was he was not as good physically as he could have been because he was taking care of her now i can do one of the things i can do the same thing my dad did or i can actually ask for help and, and and in my case 
I had to ask for help because I am getting sick myself. Um, and as much as I hate the idea, I have to think of alternatives which require less time of my face time with her because I need to make sure that she's taken care of. Now, right now she's in the hospital, so I have a little breather to be able to take care of some of my stuff. But the reality of having of being a caretaker and making plans is that you can make the best plans in the planet and they might all go up in smoke because you have no way of controlling what the person will do. And that is why I w I'm, I'm putting this message here today is because I want to build my own... I don't want to call it a, a, a brand because it's more than just a brand. I want to build my own thing. I want to be able to be the resource where people can come and tell me, you know, how did you deal with this? And I can tell them. Um, I'm going to be 50 in 40 days and I want to be able to go with, uh, take all the women through the process that I'm going through where I'm changing my life from being somebody's, for lack of a better word, somebody's slave to being my own person. And that takes a lot of little parts going and those parts have to be done correctly. And I am fortunately, sometimes I'm a little anal retentive so I want to do it exactly the way I'm supposed to do it the one thing that this disease has taught me is that yeah no you're gonna do it however it comes out it's better than nothing because right now I have to do whatever I can to make it work and it's not always gonna be a pretty an exercise on pretty it's, sometimes it's gonna be messy it's gonna be ugly it's not gonna work out the way I want it and losing that control is a big deal but knowing that every time I make a plan, it might not work exactly the way I expected it to, that's also a big deal. So what I'm asking from you is to be patient with me because I would like to have more content out here so that you guys can have more resources, especially those of you that have um, family members that have Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, I also want to start creating and developing Spanish content because I speak Spanish perfectly and there's no reason why people that speak Spanish don't have the resources available either. Uh, and I also want to spend some time educating the medical community on the questions to ask because they have this really bad habit of you just went to the ER and they transfer you from the ER to a, a, a floor and the floor people ask you the same questions that they asked you in the ER. Well, if the person has Alzheimer's, they're not going to remember anything, number one. Number two, the questions that you ask Sometimes they don't pertain to an Alzheimer's patient at all. Because if you ask them, can you do things, that, are, are you in, in, in so much pain? This is the one question that gets to me. Is the pain so bad that you cannot do things that you would normally do? Well, for an Alzheimer's patient, they can't do anything that they used to do. So the answer is yes, but not for the pain. It's because of the disease. So uh, those are things I want to work on. And obviously on you know, metamorphosis is a little different because metamorphosis is all about changing from being an employee to being whatever you want to be in your life and following your dreams and that sort of stuff. But I also want to have more material and more things that you can do now, not things that you can do later or if you have money. I want people to be able to do things right now. And the reason why I changed, oops, sorry. The reason why I changed that by particular perspective is because I was talking to a friend of mine whose mom is in a home and I've always admired her because she had the guts to actually listen to her mother because her mother actually asked her to put her in a home and because of them I actually changed my 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 point of view about homes because I used to say oh a person that leaves her parents in a home how can they do that and you know Last few years, I had realized that sometimes you just can't help it. You have to do it because you just don't have the ability to help them. But the the drop that actually changed the whole thing for me was when I saw my friend and her mom um, decide uh, to go to a home environment. Because, first of all, they made it easier for me to accept that that's a possibility at some point. Number two, they that guaranteed me that I told my daughter, and now it's that I'm recording this for eternity. It's gonna say that when I get either too old or too sick, or if I get Alzheimer's, I want to be put in a home because I don't want my daughter to have to deal with this. Um, my parents didn't have that uh, that opportunity, 
and they didn't necessarily like home environments so that's I think that's why sometimes I feel like no I don't want to put her in a home because she didn't want to but the truth of it is the average person is not really ready for how hard Alzheimer's is like I have been avoiding the doctor and then I get an appointment and for some reason it gets canceled and tomorrow I'm going to the doctor because I find it's basically one of those uh, you're coming and you're gonna sit here until you get in kind of thing because I do I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling well and I have abandoned my own plans and my own dreams because I wanted to make sure that my mother was perfectly taken care of and I didn't realize that I can't do that by myself I'm not an expert on Alzheimer's I don't intend to be I don't pretend to be I want to share as much information as I can with you guys in this particular channel because I want you guys to have the options to ask and I have learned so much in the last nine months that it's not even funny me avoiding <laughs> the topic altogether and now having all this knowledge that I want everybody to know everything that we can possibly know about this disease and hopefully it will be unnecessary in 10 or 15 years because they'll finally figure out how to solve this issue and none of us will have to deal with it but until that happens I need to make sure that you all are aware and for those especially those of you that don't have any family members yet because that is coming I want you to have a little bit more compassion and sensitivity sensitivity towards those family members of yours that do I have heard several stories of people where one family member decided to take care of the person with Alzheimer's and then somebody comes and visits and starts talking about the people that are dead and that's one of those things that depending on the Alzheimer's patient they might remember some people are dead they might not remember some people are dead and they will get very upset and that really has a mix does a number on them it gets them really upset and it makes for confusion later in the day and it makes it harder for the caretaker to take care of, of, of the person. Now in my case I have a sister who lives in the same state and she knows everything that I know and and she knows better than to say something like that but there are cases where people and they don't mean and, 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 and this is something I want to make clear and I realize that I'm all over the place with this video but I want to make something really clear. I'm aware and most family members are aware that people that make stupid mistakes in front of Alzheimer's patients don't mean any harm. Like when I had the the ambulance people here, they were like, no, we want her to answer the questions. And I'm like, she can't answer the questions. She has Alzheimer's. Yeah, but we still need her to answer the questions. Well, she's not going to answer the questions because she has Alzheimer's. And this is where people don't mean any harm, but they are making it worse. Because if you ask a person with Alzheimer's something and you keep asking the question and they realize that they're not giving the right answer, they get upset. And that makes it worse for the caretaker in the long run. So hopefully in the next coming weeks I'll be able to post more videos and give you more information about the condition itself and what, especially what caretakers can do to take care of themselves because I don't want you to end up like me. Um, but what I want you to be clear is that sometimes we just we the best laid plans you know sometimes they don't work out another thing that I was I started to mention like I said the video is all over the place I started to mention this but I didn't finish it is I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the one that changed my mind about um, putting parents in homes and that sort of thing and one of the topics that came up in the conversation was the fact that I just realized why people have midlife crisis. There's obvious the obvious fact that you get to a certain age and you go, wow, is that all there is? Especially if you work for somebody else and you didn't follow your dreams, you might have that situation going for you. But there's also the, if you have parents with Alzheimer's or any of these diseases where you have to put them in a hospital all the time or put them in a home or whatever, it's that sense of, oh my God, I busted my butt all my life so that I end up in jail. Because that's the way they look at it. And first of all, we need to change that mentality. And I'm seeing, and I'm seeing some changes in that area, arena, but not enough for people to understand how important this is. And number two, in a sense, 
it is true. You should have as much fun as possible now because you don't know what's going to happen later. I mean, let's be honest. I can be planning to go to a beach tomorrow and there'll be a storm and I won't be able to go to the beach. And I'm trying to be uplifting because I know what I was going to say was a lot worse, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, you could be planning to have a trip to Italy next year and December you get hit by a car and you never make it. So you need to have as much fun as possible right now. And if people think that you're having a midlife crisis, let them. What other people feel or think about you is none of your business. Do you. Do your thing. Enjoy yourself. Like, I have two channels on YouTube. I have a lot of people watching my channels. I honestly don't. I think I have 50 subscribers on one channel and like 15 on the other. Now, does that mean that I'm going to stop? No, because I like talking to people. And hopefully somebody that needs some information will stop by the channel and see what I'm talking about and get some information. And that already happened to me once. That somebody didn't know what sundowning was and I talked about it in another video. And they learned something new that would help them with their family member. It happens all the time. So do you do whatever you think you need to do to be, make you happy and just um, keep going because we don't know what's going to happen later. Anyway, I just wanted you guys to know why my plans did not work out the way they were supposed to. And hopefully in the next coming weeks we will have a lot more videos, a lot more information, and a lot more interesting stuff to deal with. Oh, one more thing. I don't usually create material before I'm supposed to release it. Like, I'm recording this video on uh, October 12th at 4.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I usually record it and I send it and that's it. I realize that I should edit my videos more and whatnot and that might come in the future. But what I'm trying to tell you is that another reason why I don't have a lot of material going out this month is because I don't pre-package material. I like to do things on the spot. Some people like to do it that way, some people don't. And that might change in the future with certain materials, like stuff that I learned from books and whatnot. That might be, I might be able to record that in advance and just set it to uh, release at a certain time. But for now, it is what you see is what you get when you get it. Um, I would love to hear what you have to say. If you have something to say, um, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel, the Abadiva and the Metamorphosis, Metamorphosis Rocks channel as well. I would love to hear what you have to say, what ideas you have, what questions do you have about being a caretaker or having a family member with Alzheimer's. I'm more than willing to listen to and thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.